Um, many of you have kind of kept up with and have been praying for Chris, uh, Miss Thelma's nephew, and uh, we thought we'd give her an opportunity this morning to share a little bit uh, about what's going on with Chris, and I think she just wants to praise the Lord a little bit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Miss Thelma? Morris is my nephew, my sister's only child. And it was on a Saturday two weeks ago, we were at a family get together. Everything was everything was lovely. The next day he started getting sick. Next thing I hear, he's at Methodist Hospital in Houston in ICU. He had brain bleeds. He had a stroke. Then the flu set in. Then pneumonia set in. And then the doctor come in and said, he's drowning in his own fluids. We can't do any procedures. He's too fragile. He's in critical condition. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. High fever, blood pressure. His blood pressure was 268 over something horrific. And it didn't look good. And I called pastor. And I know an awful lot of people in a lot of different churches and I called everybody I could think of because we do serve a prayer answering God. And my Bible says you have not because you ask not. And if there's anything I know is spiritual warfare, I know the Word of God. I'm thankful to know that. I've seen many miracles all through my life. This is critical. My nephew that I practically raised. And he's a preacher. Loving with my whole heart and soul. So the doctor come in and he said, He's drowning in his own fluid. We can't do any procedures to save his life. So then the doctor went into heroic measures to save his life. There was something called a rotoprone bed. I've never heard of it. But as if things weren't bad enough, they had to paralyze him totally to put him in that rotoprone bed. And what that rotoprone bed is, they entomb you can't see anything. And they put him in there and that bed moves. And when that bed got face down, all that fluid started running out of his nose. So we had hope. We started getting so excited. The blood pressure stabilized. The sugar, everything started stabilizing. And we're just rejoicing. And everybody we know is praying. The churches everywhere are praying. So then two days ago, the head of ICU came in and talked to my sister and said, we need to get him off the vent and we've tried and nothing works. He's failing miserably. We're going to try through the weekend and if he don't pass, come Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. We're going to have to put him on a track and we're going to put a feeding tube in his, put him on a feeding tube and we're going to send him to long term. I did not receive that report at all. I serve a prayer answering God. The first thing I did was pick up the phone and call pastor. And I told the pastor what I believed. And I asked him to pray. And he immediately prayed. And everything my pastor prayed, God honored. Okay, the next thing I did, we are so blessed. Y'all don't realize how blessed you are to have Brother Keith. He's faithful. And if that's not blessing enough, we've got Sister Julia Morris. She's a rock. She is awesome. She's an awesome woman of faith. And I call Sister Julia. Of course, she's been praying this whole time. And she started the prayer chain. Okay, so I'm still believing so when I was up there, I was up there the first week for three days, this last week for four days. And like I said before, if I know anything, I know spiritual warfare. <clears throat> and over a period of 40 years, I have put scriptures together. Anybody that knows me has probably gotten scriptures from me. So I brought my whole stack of scriptures. And I'm reading those scriptures over my baby. And I have an awful lot of wonderful gospel music on my phone and he's listening to gospel music non-stop i'm laying hands on him i'm praying for him i'm fighting that battle so saturday night when i was 
so bad. Of course, we walk by faith and not by sight. We got the message about 10.30. Now they've had him in a deep, deep coma. Every time we turned around, they were putting him deeper and deeper. At 10.30, they said they were doing away with that medicine. And he became conscious. He was out of the coma. We had revival at my house, hollering, screaming, just thanking Jesus. Okay. And the main thing I was praying that his mind would be right. I'm believing for 100% recovery. Okay, so yesterday we went back to the hospital to see him. And we walked in and he's off the track. We had revival again. I am so thankful and I want to personally thank each and every one of y'all that have prayed for my nephew. He is still critical. We still have challenges. But we serve a prayer answering God and he does have it all under control. And my Bible says you have not because you ask not. And I ask and we continue to stand on the word of God and I'm believing for total recovery. And I want to ask God to bless each and every one of y'all. Thank you.